Welcome to lesson 1.2. In this lesson we'll be reviewing some of the basic skills involving fractions. We'll first review how to convert a mixed number to an improper fraction. A mixed number is a whole number and a proper fraction. An improper fraction is a single fraction where the numerator is greater than or equal to the denominator. So we first want to convert three and two sevenths to an improper fraction. Following the procedure outlined above, we first multiply the denominator and the whole number, which would be seven times three. Step two, we add the numerator, which in this case would be plus two. We write the result over the original denominator, which in this case is seven. And now we'll simplify using the order of operations. So we multiply first, seven times three is equal to 21. So we have 21 plus two all over seven, which gives us 23 sevenths as our improper fraction. Let's look at the model below for three and two sevenths to understand why this procedure works. Notice these three bars represent the three, where each bar is partitioned into seven equal pieces. So three is equal to seven plus seven plus seven, or 21 sevenths. And then we have plus these two sevenths, which gives us 23 sevenths. Notice how the seven times three gives us a number of sevenths and three, and the plus two here gives us the remaining two sevenths, giving us a total of 23 sevenths for the improper fraction for three and two sevenths. For 12 and one third, again as an improper fraction we'd have the denominator times the whole number, so three times 12 plus the numerator of one all over the original denominator of three. Three times 12 equals 36, so we have 36 plus one all over three. So 12 and one-third equals 37 thirds. Now let's review how to write an improper fraction as a mixed number. We first want to write 42 fifths as a mixed number. So step one, we divide the numerator by the denominator. So we'd have 42 divided by five. And there are eight fives in 42. Eight times five equals 40. We subtract. And notice how here we have a remainder of two. The quotient becomes the whole number part of the mixed number. And the fraction part is the remainder over the denominator. So 42 fifths is equal to eight, and the fraction is going to be the remainder two over the divisor with the original denominator, which would give us two-fifths. Now let's look at the model below to see why this works. Here we have a total of 42 fifths, where every time we have five fifths, we have one whole. So notice how 42 fifths is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and two-fifths. Next we have 53 ninths, so we'll take 53 and divide by nine. And there are five nines in 53. Five times nine equals 45. And we subtract and we have a remainder of eight. Which means 53 ninths is equal to five and the remainder of eight over the denominator or divisor of nine. Now let's talk about equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are different fractions equal to the same amount or same value. Here we have three models of three equivalent fractions. Where if this rectangle is one whole, notice off of this model, we've cut or partitioned one whole into four equal pieces, one of which is shaded, so this models the fraction one-fourth. For the next model, notice how we have one whole cut or partition into eight equal pieces, two of which are shaded, so this is the model for two eighths. Notice here we have two different fractions, but they're equal to the same amount or the same value because notice how the same amount is shaded. So one fourth and two eighths are equivalent fractions. Here one whole is cut or partitioned into 12 equal pieces, three of which are shaded, so this model is three twelfths. Notice how these three fractions are equivalent fractions. 
So if we're given a fraction, for example, one-fourth, to come up with another equivalent fraction, we can simply multiply the numerator and denominator by the same value other than zero and one. So for example, if you multiply the numerator and denominator by two, we'd have one times two over four times two. Notice how this gives us two-eighths, which we can see from our model is an equivalent fraction to one-fourth. If we multiplied one-fourth by three over three, or multiplied both the numerator and denominator by three, notice how we'd have three-twelfths, our second equivalent fraction to one-fourth. By multiplying by two over two or three over three, we're simply multiplying by one, but changing the form of the fraction. So for example three, we're asked to find two equivalent fractions, two two-sevenths. So there's an infinite number of equivalent fractions we can find. For our first equivalent fraction, let's multiply the numerator and denominator by five. So we'd have two times five over seven times five, which is equal to ten thirty-fifths. Ten thirty-fifths is equivalent to two-sevenths. For our second equivalent fraction, let's multiply by eleven. So we have two-sevenths would be equal to two times eleven over seven times eleven, which is equal to twenty-two seventy-sevenths. These would be two equivalent fractions to two-sevenths. Of course, there's many others that we could find. Next, we want to simplify the following fractions. A fraction is considered simplified if the only common factor between the numerator and denominator is one. So for three-eighteenths, notice how both three and eighteen share a common factor of three, and therefore three-eighteenths simplifies. So just like before when we were multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same value, we can simplify a fraction by dividing both the numerator and denominator by the same value. So here, we can divide out the common factor by dividing the numerator by three and dividing the denominator by three. Notice how now we'd have one over six or one six, which is a simplified form of three-eighteenths because one and six only share a common factor of one. Next we have forty-two fifty-fourths. Notice how forty-two and fifty-four do share a common factor of two, but they also share a common factor of three, and therefore the greatest common factor of forty-two and fifty-four is six. So to simplify this fraction in one step, we would divide both the numerator and denominator by six. Forty-two divided by six is equal to seven, and fifty-four divided by six is equal to nine. The only common factor between seven and nine is one, and therefore we know seven ninths is a simplified form of forty-two fifths. But I do want to take a look at this again. Sometimes we may not recognize the greatest common factor, and it may take more than one step to simplify a fraction. So for example, if we start again with forty-two fifty-fourths, and let's say we first recognize as a common factor of two, so we'd have forty-two divided by two over fifty-four divided by two, this would give us twenty-one over twenty-seven, but this fraction still simplifies because twenty-one and twenty-seven share a common factor of three. So now we would divide the numerator and denominator by three, which would give us the final simplified fraction of seven-ninths. So there's nothing wrong with taking more than one step to simplify a fraction. We can only simplify it in one step if we recognize the greatest common factor between the numerator and denominator. I also want to mention there's also another common way to simplify a fraction by writing out the prime factorization of both the numerator and denominator. For example, again looking at forty-two fifty-fourths again, the prime factorization of forty-two would be two times three times seven, and the prime factorization of fifty-four would be two times three times three times three. The nice thing about doing it this way is that we can actually see the common factors. Two divided by two simplifies the one. Three divided by three simplifies the one, giving us our final simplified fraction of seven ninths. So there is more than one way to simplify fractions. And now for the last example, we're asked to simplify the following fractions if possible. Before we take a look at these though, remember a fraction bar means division. So for example, if we have fifteen thirds, that means fifteen divided by three, which is equal to five. And every division problem has a corresponding multiplication problem. 
15 divided by 3 equals 5 because 5 times 3 equals 15. Notice how the corresponding multiplication problem is formed by looking at the division problem in the opposite direction. 5 times 3 equals 15. So our first fraction is 1 fourth, and we know from above this does not simplify because the only common factor between 1 and 4 is 1, so let's just write 1 fourth equals 1 fourth. If we did want to model this fraction, we'd have one whole cut or partitioned into four equal pieces, one of which would be shaded. Next we have four over one, which means four divided by one, which we know equals four. The model for this, because the denominator is one, we'd have one whole cut or partitioned into one piece, which we already have, and we'd have four of these giving us a total of four. And also notice the corresponding multiplication problem would be four times one equals four. Next we have four fourths, which means four divided by four, which equals one. Notice how the corresponding multiplication problem would be one times four equals four, which we know is true. The model for this would be we'd have one whole, cut our partition into four equal pieces, and because the numerator is four, we have four fourths, which equals one whole. Next we have zero over four, which means zero divided by four, which is equal to zero. The reason we know this quotient equals zero is because the corresponding multiplication problem formed in this direction would be zero times four equals zero, which we know is true. The model for this would be we'd have one whole, because the denominator is four, we'd cut our partition this into four equal pieces, but because the numerator is zero, we have zero of these pieces, which would be equal to zero. And finally, we have four over zero, which means four divided by zero, and division by zero is always undefined. To justify why it's undefined, notice how the corresponding multiplication problem of formed in this direction would be some number times zero must equal four. And we know there's no number times zero which equals four, verifying this quotient or division by zero is undefined. Using a model for a fraction, there's no way we can take one whole and cut or divide it into zero equal pieces. It's just not possible. Again, verifying our quotient is undefined. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.